everyone, it's Tina and welcome back to my channel where we talk about the features we want to have and ways to get there. Today I want to talk about happiness. I read a book called The Happiness Advantage by Sean Aker that really opened up my eyes to certain qualities about happiness and what it means to be happy. It is such an important topic of conversation, I want to devote a video to this and give you some tips on how to improve your happiness. Firstly, let me start by reading this quote by Sean Aker. Happiness is such an incredible advantage in our life. When the human brain is positive, our intelligence rises, we stop diverting resources to think about anxiety. This is really important to me because so frequently in life, we spend a lot of time and energy worrying. And to be perfectly honest with you, worry doesn't serve you at all. It's very difficult for me to stop worrying, so please don't take this as a judgment. But I will tell you that I have come to realize that many of the things that I worry about and many of the things that I stress about never even come to fruition. They never manifest. I'm worrying about things and futures that never, ever occur. What a waste of time. What an energy dump. What a disheartening way to approach life. And I have actively worked on this. And I want to share with you some of the tips that I've learned through my study on this topic of how to just be a more uplifted person and happier across the board. For a little background, you should know that I struggled with depression on and off in my entire life. Even as a child, I remember having very down spells and being pessimistic. Over time, I came to understand that this was a form of either seasonal depressive disorder or it was a form of major depression that would come and go throughout my life. One of the most important things that I came to realize is that through mindfulness and thought awareness, I could disassociate myself from my feelings and from my thoughts. I came to realize that my thoughts are not necessarily me. I know that's a difficult idea to process, but it's true. And I hope that all of you are on a journey to figure this out for yourselves if you haven't already. That being said, it's important to understand that you can choose to linger in thoughts that are painful, or you can choose to linger in thoughts that are uplifting. You can choose to actively push thoughts that are helpful and creative and supportive to a lifestyle that you want. And that's really what I want to encourage with these tips. I wanna quickly cover a few studies that have happened in the past. In 2011, the University of Illinois proved that, through multiple studies actually, that happier people live longer and have better health. In 2014, the University of Warwick did a study that showed that happy employees were 12% more productive, and that was reinforced again in 2019 by a study done by Oxford University that was specifically focused on call center workers, but showed that they were 13% more productive on the weeks that they reported they had uplifted feelings and were in a happier state of mind. There have been a multitude of studies, and a quick internet search will show you that happiness and your state of mind absolutely influences your health, your well being, and how you approach life. In the book, The Happiness Advantage, Sean Aker really helped me understand that one of the greatest things improving your mental state and pursuing a happier outlook gives you is creativity. When you are in a happier frame of mind, your mind opens up to possibilities that would ordinarily be shut down through a pessimistic outlook or a depressed state. The ability to have your mind generate more solutions to the problems you face is a huge thing to acknowledge and it's really important and I want each and every one of you, because every single person faces problems in their life, to be aware of this and so therefore pursue a happier outlook so that you can have more solutions at your disposal for the problems that you face. Many people believe that happiness is genetically disposed. You have a disposition for how happy you will be. You have a disposition for whether or not you'll be depressed. And there is truth to this statement, but most scientists in psychology would agree that that only makes up 50%. You have a happiness set point that is genetically set for you, but that only makes up 50%. So what's up with the other 50%? What they've found over time is that 10% of that will be influenced by your external circumstances. That would be your job, your family life, things that are external to you, people you interact with, the relationships, where you live. These have a 10% influence on your state of mind. What does that mean? 
That means you have 40%. You have 40% left to change your outlook. This is huge. So these tips that I'm about to give you are what will influence that remaining 40%. And 40% is a big, big chunk. So please stay tuned. Okay guys, I took a wellness course through my employer. My employer through our health and wellness um, annual incentives does offer different coaching programs that you could take. Because I had just finished reading The Happiness Advantage by Sean Aker, I was really excited to see that they had a happiness program in there. In this program, there were five categories that you could do exercises in which would improve your happiness. The first of these five categories was gratitude. The number one recommendation was to keep a gratitude journal. And this is a feedback or a recommendation that I see frequently whenever I'm looking at psychology and you know personal well-being improvement activities. Her recommendation was to do it on a weekly basis and was to write down five things every week that happened in the past week that were a blessing to you. So in other words, count your blessings on a weekly basis, but doing it at a week long increment versus three things every day, which is what you usually see, allows you to really scan and reflect on the past week. In prior videos, I've talked about the importance of reflection and it's highlighted here again. But in this way, it's asking you to reflect on, you know, not the lessons learned and the failures you've had in the past week, but specifically, what are things that you have experienced in the past week that you consider a blessing and something you want to express gratitude for? Additionally, and this was a unique idea, to write a gratitude letter. Write a letter to somebody who, on a weekly basis, has improved your you know, circumstance in life. Maybe it's somebody that you worked with. Maybe it's somebody that you interact with at a children's activity. Maybe it's somebody that coached you. Maybe it's somebody that is, you know, the book I read. Maybe it's the author of the book I read. It's not suggesting that you send the letter, although you could do that. I don't think there's anything wrong with expressing your gratitude to another person. The exercise is specifically to write the letter. Express in the letter why you appreciate that person, what they did to help you, how that has served you, and your optimism has been increased because of that. Literally, write in the letter that you are happier because of situation, whatever that situation was. The next item is to cultivate optimism. You want to expect good things to happen to you. It's that feeling of hope. It's that feeling that there's a silver lining. It's that feeling that things will get better than they are today. As a matter of fact, the best is yet to come. Keep that in your mind. I have um, a poster hung up in my office that says exactly that, the best is yet to come. I have a hard day and I look at that poster and I think, you know what, the best is yet to come. And this has become a truth for me. Things could be good now. It's not to think of it like, oh, things are bad and it's only gonna be good in the future. No, it's to think that things are okay now or things are good now, but you know what? The best is yet to come. That's such a powerful way to think and it just puts a smile on my face to know that things will get better and better and better in my life and I can influence that. One of the other exercises for cultivating optimism is to write a story about yourself that's good. In other words, think about your ideal self and write down a story with that person in it. Maybe my ideal self is fit, motivated, successful, earns a good living, has a flexible schedule, has a great outlook. I could write a story about this version of Tina. And like we talk about all the time when we're making plans, there is something super powerful about putting it to paper. Man, I honestly think if you put this to paper, you read it to yourself, you will start to create almost like a cognitive resonance of this more positive person that you are creating in yourself. You can and absolutely will make yourself a better person with a better outlook if you describe yourself in writing and out loud as the ideal version of yourself. You will start making steady process toward it. You will feel better. And like I said from you know, earlier in the video, when you do this, you'll find more creative opportunities to help that unfold. This one's gonna be a little bit tough, but item number three is to forgive. The exercise of forgiveness is very difficult and I have to acknowledge that it is a choice. It is not a feeling. I wanna be really clear about something. Forgiveness is not reconciliation. If somebody is abusive to you, 
You are not expected to welcome them back into your life repeatedly. You are not a doormat. You should not forget bad behavior, but you can still forgive it. You can release it. You can wish well for a person who's done you harm. The Bible talks about this quite a lot, and I've practiced it in my own life, and it's not always easy. There are people that because of work or because of family, they are still a part of my life, even though I struggle with liking them. <laughs> or maybe even put another way, I struggle with accepting what they've done to me in the past. They have hurt me emotionally and deeply. That being said, I can't cut them out of my life. I don't ever forget what they did to me, but I do forgive them. And what I mean by forgiveness is I try not to sit in those negative emotions. I try not to focus on those negative emotions and I try instead to be professional, to be caring and to wish them well. If it's somebody who really harmed me in my personal life and I don't need them in my life anymore, I have cut those people out and that has included friendships in the past that were harmful to my psyche, harmful to my spirit, um, or just out and out harmful. And that is absolutely okay. However, I can still look at those people and wish them well in life. I can still hope for them and pray for them, knowing that they'll never be welcome back into my home. Item number four is practicing kindness. Practicing kindness is so easy. You can do it every day. You can do it in small acts. You can do it by volunteering. You can do it by holding a door open for someone. You can do it by praying for someone. There are so many ways to be kind. Practicing kindness gives you a softer image of yourself and it also makes you more likable. When you're likable and when you think of yourself well, again, you just are a happier person. It improves the way you feel. And you know, honestly, have you ever helped somebody and you just feel so darn good after it? You start to think maybe it's selfish to be so helpful because I'm not even really enjoying so much that I help this person. I'm mostly just glowing in the fact that I feel so good. This is what kindness can do for you. And by the way, I don't think that is selfish at all. I think that that is just, um, again, a really positive outcome of being kind and you it's the reward of kindness and you deserve it. Lastly, but most definitely not least, we want to savor the good experiences. Kind of like I just expressed with the kindness, you want to really savor those moments where you feel good. If you've ever suffered from depression, you know that really what happens is you create a downward spiral. You have this negative thought, this negative feeling, and it just starts to repeat and play in your mind. And before you know it, you've spiraled down into a really pathetic state. And what I'm talking about is doing the exact opposite. Have an experience and then think, man, that really helped so-and-so and it really made me feel good and I really saw this positive benefit and the community's been improved and before you know it, you are savoring this experience and you've got it just like up here and you feel so great about it. This is savoring a great experience. Another thing that you can do is pretend like you only have one month left to live wherever you are. I don't want it to be like, pretend you will have only one month left to live forever, like you're going to die in a month because that's kind of morbid and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about pretend like you only have one month left to live wherever you live. So go spend some time with those great friends you've made. Go see the museums that you always said you were gonna go to but you hadn't. Go explore some of the nature around you, some of the parks, some of the noteworthy places. And then when you're having those experiences, truly enjoy them. Be in those moments, and then after they're done, relive them. One of the things that I was taught when I was marathon training a bajillion years ago, because believe it or not, right now I'm doing a couch to 5K, um, but at one point in my life, I did run a marathon. One of the bits of advice that they gave when you were marathon training was create a mental movie of the success. What would it feel like when you cross the finish line? What did your success look like? How did it feel? Yes, it was all done in your imagination, but they were like, create a 30 minute clip and just play it back in your head. I want you to do the same things with these experiences that you have, whether it's an experience that you planned or one that just kind of stumbled into during your day to day life. Those moments feel really good. Relive them, create a mental movie clip of them and play them over in your head and you will see that it will uplift you. In closing, you guys, I want to say one more quote, happiness is the joy we feel while we're striving toward our potential. If you know what your ideal self is, if you know who you want to be, 
Happiness is knowing that it can be a reality, that it will be a reality, and that you are working toward that reality. Happiness is knowing that you absolutely can be your best self and that you are making incremental progress toward that best self. You guys, I am so excited for each and every one of you. I know that you are gonna have a phenomenal year and a phenomenal life. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.